Hey guys, you here with another video for Blender. So I'm going to be designing some info decals. I've been designing info decals uh, for the past, I think, two or three months for our Patreon and our membership uh, on BlenderBros.com. And so we're going to be continuing with the theme. So I just want to have more, you know, more info decals in my disposal to create more interesting sci-fi models. They're really cool and then make everything comes to come together. So I'm designing them mainly with, you know, with modeling in mind. So, um, you know, it's something that I would like to see on my models and something that I think looks good and makes sense. So, you know, this is an example from, uh, I think last month of December, I can't remember, we produced so many, you know, tutorials and decals that I'm, I'm getting confused myself sometimes. But it's going to be coming out this year. Either it's November or December, I honestly can't remember. I think it's going to be December. Uh, Blender is the main thing here and I will be using decal machine, but you know, if, if you want to, you can just uh, use it as a PNG and, and basically as a texture and then apply it uh, to your models using simply UVs or whatever. But I'm going to be using decal machine because it's simply easier. And then I'm going to move on very quickly to Photoshop, but you don't really need Photoshop if you don't want to. You can use any program like GIMP or whatever. And it's just the plane here. I'm going to go to a regular view. And I can, you know, turn the screencast keys. I don't think you will need them because I'm, I'm going to be doing anything complicated, really. It's all about design and kind of a thought flow that's more important than, you know, what keys are being pressed. But uh, there's always someone complaining about keys not being displayed. So there you go. Okay, so let's make it larger and um, let's grab a box cutter and let's go to Angon. And I think I'm just going to sl start slicing. So I'm going to slice here and... I'm gonna slice this off. That's one, two. I'm gonna slice this off here, like that. And I'll try to maintain the even thickness between, you know, these two. I went the wrong way. Uh, between these two lines, even thickness here and even thickness here. So if I do something like this and press X and then tab, I'm gonna go to a pose mode and now I can adjust these uh, to my liking. So, you know, I could just simply move it a little bit up here. Maybe that's a bit too much, something like that. I think actually it's okay. I just slice it. So let me see that. Let's uh, grab this, uh, ever scroll this one and GX and just simply move it a little bit to, to the right. So uh, this thickness here on both sides is identical. We can now cut this piece here like that. So we're gonna cut this off, okay? Let's grab this bit and extend it on X a little bit and maybe do something like this. And I think this is gonna look quite interesting. Maybe this is a little bit too tall, so we can make it a bit shorter. So select them both and, you know, cut it in here. It's gonna be looking a little bit in more interesting. Now, so this one I would like to be equal in height to this one, so, you know, GG and sort of slide it up and slide it up somewhere here. Okay, well, let's choose some font in Photoshop, something that's gonna be you know interesting and not boring. Well, this one is kind of cool but tough. This one is really good for you know advertisements. What is this new new academy? Right. So the way you import fonts to Blender, it's very simple. You simply uh, click on whichever font you chose, so you need to make sure that it's regular, bold, italic, or whatever. So let's go regular, and I don't know if it's going to be here, or it's going to be my font folder. Sometimes Blender will not find fonts, all the fonts installed in Windows for some reason. So you can see that New Academy is not in here. So I have to go to my E drive and get it. So I'm going to go to my font folder and go to New Academy. There we go. And open font. Boom. And now when you start typing in Blender, let's just select this and type something here. So let's say this is going to be airlock. And uh, let's just go to object mode and make it bigger. Now I'm trying to align, you know, this here properly. I think in between is going to be better than like this. See, it creates like a weird kind of a segmentation here. If you're going to go like that, it's going to be probably better. Maybe like this. Airlock. 
and I think this is still too small and it should be already big like that and also uh, the gap here is a little bit large right here so what we can do type two phrases so we could type error right and then shift the X and then lock and you can kind of you know change the uh, the width I know I probably can change it in here but quite frankly I can't be a fuck just looking for values and shit this is more intuitive for me and you know I work that way old habits die hard okay so don't come to me like an anal knight saying oh you can adjust it in here so I fucking know I just don't give a shit so GX and that's maybe a bit too big I don't know hmm because when you make this really big, right, there's going to be a dominant feature. If you're going to make it smaller, there's going to be a dominant feature. So we need to kind of decide which way to go. Maybe something like this is fine. I kind of like that. You need to look at the overall balance of things, you know. Now, another thing I want to pay attention to is the distance between these two. Maybe it's a good idea to maintain it the same distance between the bottom and... Um, you know, bottom of the letters and, and this edge here. I think it's not correspond a little bit, but it's going to be more airy. And now we could do something in here, you know, for example, we could grab this one and shift D and uh, Q and go to operations and uniquify. And we could go here and we could slice it. Okay, so uh, we could just slice it here with, with box cutter and, you know, sharpen to apply this. And move this one a little bit here like this and shift the x move it in here make it a little bit smaller so shift s into geometry sx move it a bit like that and then shift d and make it even smaller like this and gx move it here something like this that's pretty cool so it kind of you know underlines this AI it could be like an AI airlock or something. That's pretty cool. I actually, like this thing. So you know, sometimes when you design something, you're gonna find some you know interesting accidents. In here, what we could do is, for example, put some kind of a serial number or a number of a lock. So you could put, for example, like you know zero seven or something. So we could grab that, shift the X, and um, delete that, and put zero seven, and make it smaller, right? And maybe put it somewhere here and make it smaller make it a bit bigger and let's just solidify it so Q and uh, Geo to mesh and then solidify well solidify and press 2 to go both ways and select that in difference how are we looking oh that's pretty cool that's pretty cool. I'm not sure about these, the 7, you see now, the, the 7 here doesn't really correspond with this angle here, which I don't like. So what we might do is fix it, you know. So let's grab this cutter and go here to operations and clean mesh so we can get rid of all the junk. Select these and simply GX and, you know, move it in here like this. So, so this 7, uh, the angle corresponds with this angle here. Grab these two and GX and just move it a little bit in here so it's fatter. And I think it's going to look a little bit more interesting like this, right? A little bit more. This O could be a little bit closer. So um, let's just select it and GX and move it a bit closer. And I think we can make it a little bit bigger. And it's going to be more interesting. There you go. And now this looks pretty cool to me. So see, so yeah, this is how, you know, I would design most of my decals and occasionally what I would do I would go to uh, some kind of a pure file that I have from games with screenshots and just skim through and find some idea that I like you know some just kind of a hint um, and create something out of it so to render this you can you can do it uh, both ways just turn off this grid here and do um, do a viewport render here just remember to save it as to save it as um, uh, RGBA 
okay and make sure that the alpha background is transparent or you could just go to cycles and you know page down with machine tools and smart cam to view let's set smart cam to something like i don't know 130 mil so it's going to be orthographic let's just zoom out a little bit right and now i'm going to specify resolution here to um to 2560 by 1440 so in photoshop i can actually create 2048 file out of this so it's going to be 2k you don't need any lights for this it just doesn't matter uh, because we don't need lights as long as you don't have a background you're good so uh, that's that and let's just you know render it very quickly boom and let's save it so tiff i'm going to replace this here actually i'm going to do it we're gonna save a new TIFF here and then we can go to Photoshop cool so in Photoshop you can see that we have alpha background uh, like I said make sure that you, when you're saving as a PNG or TIFF you're gonna include alpha background so RGBA otherwise you will not be uh, you know you're gonna you're not gonna have a transparent background so here all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a, a create a layer and I would not recommend making these white. Uh, this might create some really weird chromatic aberrations uh, when you're going to be baking this with Tico machine. I suggest middle uh, middle gray, which is basically um, 128, 128, 128 in RGB scale. So it's going to be middle gray. So 128 on all of them, and then simply fill it up and clip it. Okay, so you got a gray image. So you know, save as. Uh, PSD and I'm going to resize it to 2k so all my decal is going to be 2k then we can crop it so just go to crop tool and if you have a ratio here set up just click on clear and then hold alt and you can scale it like that on both sides and release it and just scale it on, uh, from the top you want to leave a little bit of a padding okay not too much but you want to leave a bit of a padding what I mean by that is some kind of a buffer around your decal okay uh, so don't you know don't sort of uh don't make your uh, crop literally touch your text you want some padding okay for bleeding and that's good enough uh we, we can you know resave it if you want to i'm going to um you can't flatten the image you need to merge visible because it's a png and you need to save it as png otherwise you will not have a uh, the transparent background so PNG and you know save okay and in blender uh, let's just you know create a new scene and go here to decal machine so decal machine creation right info and just clear everything here crop it out just set it to maybe four or even five or four it should should do and then you load image and once you find it just choose a PNG and open image if you want to load more than that like let's say 10 you can do that and when you load more than that you're gonna have uh, like a batch creation here like an option so you, know, you click that and then create info deco and you're done so then if you're gonna uh, drop a plane on it right and let's just scale it and we're gonna add some color to it alt m and then we're gonna project it so press w d and project it and go to look dev because in this view you can't see anything make this background a bit darker so it's gonna be a bit more interesting and boom there's your decal okay looking peachy so now if you want to add it to a new collection what you need to do is you need to create a collection so that you go here to preferences to your decal machine right and uh, decal machine there you go let's make it a bit bigger i got a fuck ton of decals okay so i'm gonna have to scroll for a week and a half and then here you just create a new uh, folder so let's say blender bros January 2022 there you go and create it and then what you need to do is refresh it here okay so it's gonna appear in your decal library and save prefs all right good and then when you select it you can't move this decal about okay so when you move it about to project it you can't add it to your uh, library so what you need to do is you need to rebake it okay so let's rebake it create the decal boom now you can see the options here we're gonna put it in blender bros january 2022 and simply add to library okay and then 
when you press D, you see you're gonna have a new library, January 2022, and there's your decal. So there you go. And that's how you create decals for decal machine. Now I'm gonna give you a cool tip if you wanna make this decal into a, a massive decal. It's it's really easy, guys. All you do is go here to a mission, change it from black to whatever color you want, and pump strength, and you got an emissive decal. It's piss easy. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the vid. Give us a like and sub if you did. And if you would like to learn more about using hardups and box cutter, we have a free course on our website. You can click on the link in the video description, and you'll get access to a free course and a free PDF file, which is awesome. And, uh, you know, hope you're going to have fun with this one. Also, look into our membership. We have a fantastic membership on our website. There's a massive coaching community forum, which, uh, you know, we help one another and answer all kind of questions. There's a lot of perks, including discounts on our premium courses. So it's a really cool feature. Um, we created it because we thought that Patreon simply doesn't offer as many tools as we would like to have. So, you know, we, we at the moment running both. So if you would like, and prefer you know if you prefer patreon you can go on patreon if you prefer our membership you just hop on our membership we're going to be maintaining both so all right well thanks for watching and see you in the next one